Hi guys, welcome back to Nintendo Arcade. I'm Alex, how you all doing? In this video I'm going to show you what I've been picking up. And my first little pick up is some ROMs for my Versus system, my red tent. Um, they're all empty, but I shall be getting someone, one of my mates, to burn me balloon fight, which is what I got the red tent for. It's supposed to be absolutely awesome. I haven't actually played on the red tent yet. So I've been watching plenty of John's videos on how 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 he plays it, and I love the games. I play it on the NES, but the the versus system's a lot different because you can go up into vertical levels. It goes up higher, whereas the the NES version it just stays static on one level. So I can't wait uh, to play this game. Of course, you can play on both screens. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting balloon fight burnt onto those ROMs. It should be really cool. Um, what else have we been picking up? Oh, some Nintendo buttons in there. I didn't pick them up. <clears throat> well, Metroid, that's what I've been picking up. Been really into my Metroid. I've been playing Fusion, which is a really cool game. It came out about the same time. I think it came out on release date um, of Metroid Prime. It came out at the same time. And I never got to play it. So I'm going back and playing all these old classics. You know, I don't have to keep up with the latest game all the time. You know, for me, I can go back at any any era and play any game. I don't have to keep up with the Joneses and play the latest game. You know, I feel a lot of gamers feel pressurised to play the latest game. You know, they something new comes out and they have to buy it. You know, and they haven't even finished the last game. They feel pressurised. I don't want to get into that cog because um, I know what it's like. It's very similar when I was on the motorbike scene. Um, when a new motorbike came out, they had to keep releasing a new bike every year, and there wasn't much difference from the bike the previous year. A few little mods here and there, but you know, the bikers would be um, trading their old bike, even though there was nothing wrong with it, just to get the latest thing. And I don't know, it's just, I don't see the point, you know, just, just stick with what you've got, you know, enjoy what you've got, play it. You know, and that's what I'm trying to do. I will play the odd new game, and I think Nintendo does a great job of bringing out new games, and there's enough new games to keep me busy. Like Smash Brothers is absolutely awesome. Um, it's taken me a while to get into that, but I absolutely love the mechanic of that game, and it's such a deep game, really into it. That's why I'm wearing the T-shirt. Um, yeah, I just fucking love that game. And what else have been playing on there? Splatoon. I haven't really got into Splatoon that much. I've brought the game, played it a few times, but I'm not really a first person shooter anyway, um, especially not a multiplayer online sort of community based player, I'm not really into that. So, I don't know, it's okay, it's not really my bag though, it's not really my game, but I can see why people like it. But what I've been playing is Metroid Fusion, and this is a lovely, I think I've showed you this before, this is a lovely Japanese box, some really cool box art on there. This is what I picked up absolutely love this game I'm not playing the Japanese version even though I think someone did say that the, the Japanese got a few little extras to it I don't know I have to look that up again or I might be zero I'm not sure but yeah absolutely love I just bought it for the box art and the game because I if I like a game that much I'll collect every game in that series which is what I'm doing I'll show you that in a minute or you can see it from there look and the next one I picked up is Zero Mission which I haven't played yet. I'm looking forward to playing this next. Um, you know, I only get like an hour or two every other night to play these sort of games. But just look at the box art on that. It's so fucking awesome. Really, really cool. And that's lovely. It's a Japanese version. So the English version. Now this isn't an original one. This is a reproduction one. But I, have, I do have a, a, an English one coming. So that's the difference between the English version and the Jap version. I don't mind this artwork, it's pretty cool. It's just a shame they had to put this big Game Boy Advance down one side. You know, just that would have been much better. It's a little more subtle in the one corner maybe. But yeah, love the box art, love the game, love the character. You know, Metroid, Super Metroid was one of my favourite games on the SNES and always will be. Still go back to play it now and again. Played it earlier this year and finished it. So yeah, Metroid is a, a real favourite of mine. Um, there's the box. Oh, this is the Metroid Fusion. This is the English version. 
that. So still both, that's still cool box art. Still like the box art on that, it's still cool. But still prefer the Jack version, as you can see. It's just a shame you've got that silver Game Boy Advance strip going down there. But still, still very, very cool. So that's my Metroid pickups. Um, also, I picked up a couple of... Well, because you know that the Nintendo Club points are running out this year. They're not doing any more gifts. I think um, they will be rewarding uh, Nintendo collectors by rewarding them with probably online downloadable digital content that you can download on the Wii or the 3DS. So they're doing away with physical stuff like this. I mean, to be honest with you, it wasn't a great system, and they must have been losing a lot of money, and I understand why they've done this. Um, but if there's always something I wanted, I always used to buy it on eBay anyway, because most of the good stuff came from Japan. But I did pick up these. These are little soundtracks from Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario 3D World, because I love the music out of that. So I picked up these. I haven't undone them. I will do, and I will download them, and I will listen to them. And I'll have it on the background music in here. Probably why I'm restoring a cab or something like that. But yeah, really, really cool. Nice of Nintendo to give away this stuff anyway for their loyalty for all clubbers. Um, so yeah, really pleased with that. Also, I picked up this little game, little puzzle game. Now, I do like puzzle games, but I haven't clicked with this one yet. Now, I'm a big fan. I don't know if you've played um one of my favorite games on the 3ds which is if i can find it clash of heroes now <laughs> me and my missus absolutely loved this game we killed this game it was so so cool i can't recommend this enough this is one of the best games on the on the ds um you know it was, it was voted one of the best games of the year yeah best ds game of 2009 there you go look you see that guys um, so I'm always looking out for for new puzzle games on the, on the DS and the DS is great for that you can just sit there with your stylus and it's great for that so you know I was hoping this would be fairly similar I haven't given it enough time to be honest with you but I, I did have a little go I don't know I haven't clicked with it just yet maybe there's a little bit more depth to it but there's two games on one here you've got puzzle dragons and um, puzzle, puzzle dragon Z uh, so you've got the Super Mario Edition one. So, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, picked up that. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate on the 3DS. Um, again, I've picked this up, I've started playing it, and realised, really, I should have the new 3DS to play this. Because um, to, to look around, you've got to use a stylus, and you've got to use, like, a D-pad. It doesn't quite do it for me. And everyone I've heard on podcasts and stuff say so you've got to play this with the the little, the little nub nub. There's a little, little nub nub they've um, included onto the 3DS. It's like um, another analog stick, but it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't move. You just run. It's like one of those little old mouses you have on an old laptop computer in the middle of the keyboard. It's like that. So you just run your finger over it, and it moves the viewpoint around on the screen. So. You know, I might have to invest in a new 3DS. I've wanted one anyway. Um, but yeah, and I've wanted to play that. You know, there's hundreds of hours in that game. You know, and for, for, this is what I like about Nintendo. They cater for the serious gamer. If you want to put some serious gameplay in and um, a lot of hours into a game, you know, Nintendo have got games out there for you if you want it. You know. And they've also got silly little games like this, more arcadey games. You know, if you just want to pick up and play, like Smash Brothers, 10 minutes, that's all you've got time for. That's great. This is another one. I haven't played this yet. I haven't even opened it. But I love the Wario series. I think it's crazy and mad. My favourite one is actually on the Game Boy Advance. I'll show you that. I've got it up here somewhere. Uh, there we go. And the reason why I like this one so much is absolutely crazy. This is my favourite WarioWare of all time. It's just so fun. You have to get this game. Um, it's got all sorts of uh, references to old Nintendo games. You know, it's even got a game of Sheriff in there. You can actually play Sheriff in it, which is really, really cool. 
Um, and it's just mad, it's just so Nintendo, I absolutely love it. So I'm hoping this is going to be in the same sort of vein. It looks it, looks absolutely crazy. So, yeah, Nintendo are doing a good job bringing out some cool games. So that's my little pickups there, games. What else did I pick up? Just have a little sip of the coffee. Amiibo, guys. As you can see, where's the collection going? It's getting huge. Absolutely love it. Don't they look fantastic? Huh? Don't they look fantastic? They will be going to a cabinet at the end of this back wall here. Each and every one of them will be in a cabinet. I'm so glad I've got them out of their casing. You know, it was a bit of a difficult decision. But can you imagine all those boxes in here? I haven't got the room for all that. No way. They look much better out of their box. Please get them out of the box. They look fantastic. So I think I've got about 23 so far. Um, and I'm only going for the Smash Brothers um, uh, lineup of figures. You know, what they've got in the, uh, in the game, which is about 52, I think. I'm not going for anything else. I'm not going for the gold Mario or the silver Mario. I can't, but you know, there's got to be an end to it. And the end is Smash Brothers, and that's what made it. I think, you know, being a Nintendo collector, they look fantastic in here. The detail on these are absolutely awesome. You know what? I've always collected figures anyway. I used to collect Citadel miniatures. I don't know if you remember them. I was one of those nerds back in the 80s who used to travel up to Hammersmith um, to go to the only games workshop in the country. This is where it all started in Hammersmith. And I used to play Dungeons and Dragons. And there was no Warhammer back then. It was all just Dungeons and Dragons. We used to collect these little lead figures. And... Um, this shop in Hammersmith was the only shop to get it. And I had, I've still got them up in the loft. I don't know how much they're worth, probably a lot. I've still got all the sit down miniatures from the first catalogue. So, you know, the, the trolls and the, and the uh, giants from uh, Sinbad and stuff, I've got all those. They're really, really cool. And they've all been painted by me as well. I actually used to paint figures for a shop in Kingston. Um, used to, they used to give us like 10 quid or something for a figure which back then as a kid was quite a lot and they used to display them in the front of the in the window and you were so proud if your figure got in the window, you know, you just, it was so cool. So, you know, okay, you might say I'm a big kid. Yeah, I'm a big kid, so what? You know, my but my kids, my cousin, my, my daughter's cousins came down here today, my nieces, and they absolutely loved being in here, absolutely loved it. You know, they saw this and they were just like, wow, you know. And they were down in the, in the front room playing Smash Brothers and it was just great. I took a picture of them all sitting there playing together. And I just thought, look at that. That's just brilliant, you know. The whole family coming together and playing Nintendo games. And I took a few pictures and put it on Facebook. And it was just, it was just awesome to see. Because I remember when I was a kid, their age, playing Pong. You know, and a few of my mates playing it. And Atari 2... 1600 you know the old wooden machine playing Star Wars on there and and E.T. and all those fucking crap games and I remember that with fond memories you know and hopefully they will go back with fond memories of coming down here playing Smash Brothers and you know hopefully when they're my age they might go back and start collecting these things they'd be worth a lot of money then so anyway I think they're great and don't let anyone t tell you anything else because they are absolutely awesome and I'm about to show you the five that I picked up this week and they're really really cool this is Dark Pit it's quite a big figure okay he's really cool not one of my favorite ones but he's good he's good we like it this is a really really big figure this is Ganondorf from Zelda he's got some really cool detail on his on his coke cloak I should say rather He's quite a big figure, quite a chunky guy. Loads of detail on there. Um, I picked this one up in Sainsbury's. So this is Zelda. And she's quite delicate. She's very pretty. Her dress has got lots of fine detail on there. Nice colours. Um, I don't know what she's doing. She's in a bit of a funny stance, but... I like it. They're all good. There's not one bad amiibo, to be honest with you. There really isn't. They're all really, really cool. 
Um, this one I've been after for ages. I think a lot of people are after this one. This is Little Mac from Punch Out. Um, and the reason why he was little is because I had to make him little in the game so you could see the other character. Because back in those days, they didn't know how to do 3D. So they had to make the guy that you were controlling really, really small so you could see the character behind him. Otherwise, you, your figure would get in the way. It wasn't until they did the Super Nairs and Super Punch Out that they did the wire frame where you could actually see through the character that you were playing as. But on the NES version, they didn't do that. They just shrunk him. So that's where he got his name from, Little Mac. But he's really cool. I use him a lot actually in Smash Brothers, he's a good character. This has got to be one of my favourite characters, uh, one of my favourite amiibos, just because I think she's absolutely beautiful. She's got a lot of detail. And um, yeah, she's one of the biggest figures. It's just Paul, Paula Patina. Is it Paul Patina? She's from Echid Icarus. She's absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Can you see that? I think the light's a bit strong here, isn't it? Maybe come that side a bit. Can you see that, guys? That is so cool. She's got something, got something going on here. It's really, really cool. I think it's too bright, isn't it? Maybe I'll come back. Maybe I'll move the camera a bit over to here. I think I'm right next to that light. That's better, isn't it? There you go. Isn't that cute? So yeah, she's really, really cool. So I've got, um, how many have I got now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 28, 28 Amiibos. And I think there's 41 um, that's been released. So I'm getting there. Now, as I'm collecting loose ones, they are a little bit cheaper. So if you're looking out... If you do an eBay search, then just search loose Amiibos because they're a lot cheaper than the box ones. Because everyone wants the box ones, so they go for a lot more. So it does work out a lot cheaper if you can find, and also you can find Jap ones. But it too, do take about two weeks to get over here. It's quite a long wait, to be honest with you. Um, and that's it really, guys. Um, I've got a lot of stuff coming this week. I've brought... Um, some more games from my red tent and a game I can't wait to play which is Gradius and because I got that come in the red tent I thought I'd do a little gameplay video of a really rare game on the Famicom which is Gradius 2 this is a really hard game to get over to get over to get hold of um, doesn't come up very often I paid about 20 quid for this game and it's in amazing condition. It's got some really cool box art. I think it's a rock hard game, guys. Really, really hard. I've played it a few times. I haven't got that far with it. But I thought I'd show you it because it is a lot different than the other versions. So we'll, we'll stick that on in a bit. And I'll show you that because the next time I do a video, it's going to be a Gradius on my red tent. And also got Ice Climber coming as well and Duck Hunt. But I won't be able to play Duck Hunt because I haven't got the gun. And I'm not that bothered about it really, because if I want to play gun games, I'll probably just do the, the zapper on the NES, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, so those, those, those things to look forward to. So that's it, guys. That's the pickups. What else is there? Oh, yeah, the big, the big thing that's changing here is my PAL collection of SNES games is gone. Yep, it's all gone. It's been sold. Why has it been sold? Two reasons. A, I needed the money because um, I've been buying too much other stuff like arcade stuff. And to be honest with you, the arcade stuff comes first. Yes, I didn't want to sell a PAL collection. It's my it's the collection dearest to me. It's a system. It's my favourite system. But you know what? I can get it back. But you can't get this arcade stuff. If it turns up, you've got to buy it because it doesn't come up very often. So I just thought, hey, sod it it's going I'll pick it up again and to be honest with you I was toying with the idea of selling the PAL and getting either going all for Super Famicom Jap games or maybe switching to American games and the reason being as you all know the PAL versions are that much smaller they run so much slower and you know 
<sighs> that doesn't really bother me that much, to be honest with you, but I do get a bit fed up with swapping systems around. Okay, I could get a, a switcher on the back of my snares. I could get it modded. But, you know, it was getting a bit bitty. I just want to have one or the other. So I'm going to make a decision which way I'm going to go. I might just have first-party uh, American carts and have all the rest third-party just on the Super Famicom. I don't know yet, but either way, I will be building that back up again. But I will not be buying any more Famicom games. I'm just going to concentrate on the Black Label and NES games, which you see up the top here. I've now filled this shelf with black, half of the shelf, with black label NES games. And my my aim is to collect all of them and then just stop there because I just can't keep going on and on. You have to put a limit on this stuff. It costs so much. And that's my limit. Black label, first party NES games, stop. And then just concentrate on the arcade stuff. New, new vid games and SNES games. <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? It's a hell of a lot. But you know, there's not that many more SNES games I want, to be honest with you. Um, and you can still pick them up fairly cheap. They're not all that dear. So we'll just have to see how we go with that. So anyway, that's it, guys. I just want to tell you where I am with the collection, where I am with where I'm going with it. Now I just want to show you this Gradius. So we're, so for the next video, I'll show you on, on the Versus system on the, on the red tent. So anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this part. Let's go over to the uh, Famicom now and play Gradius. <laughs> Right, so here we are. As you can see, the startup screens are really cool. There's no music. Um, you've just got this kind of really cool, detailed ship, um, which I think it's the Viper. The Victor, is it the Victor or the Viper? I can't remember what it's called now, but it's really cool. Look at that. I really like it. It reminds me of sort of like the early Spectrum loading scenes. You know, they used to do a lot of pictures at the beginning. Really cool, so let's fire it up. This is rock hard game, so I'm just gonna try and concentrate as much as I can. You see that all right there? Go for two speed ups. Two speed ups, missile, then then the options. Let's try again. I've ever seen to be honest with you. Oh, 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 I lost everything. That's the trouble with this game. I've got to start from the beginning again. This is such a good game. Love the music. My firepower is not really strong enough now to kill these things straight out. So I've got to watch it. So it's just not strong enough. You see, it's a rock hard game. It might be easier with a joystick playing this game. But yeah, then I'll get the adrenaline going. I absolutely love it. Let's try it again, guys.
Oh, 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 why did I go for that? See so, what well, this D-pad's getting a hammering. <laughs> What do I want double for? <sighs> it's a rock hard game. I think that's why I like it. <sighs> I need that laser. That's my favourite one. I'm in really good position now. Jesus! Let's rock on, guys. My fingers are killing me. the option. Jeez. Such a great game, but my god is it hard. Right, let's give it one more go. One more go. I totally recommend this game, even though I'm really, really crap at it. As I say, I see my mate finish Gradius on one life. This was at a Nerg event a couple of weeks ago. Got me totally hooked on the game. So I can't wait to get on the verses, but let's give this another go. This is really cool. Oh, I get greedy. I get so greedy. I want everything. So playing this on the D-pad is fucking hard work. <laughs> on that are just unbelievable. That is cool. Um, that is so cool. Glad you watched that guys because that was awesome. Wasn't that cool? That was such a cool game but honestly you, we're going to have to play this on a joystick next time because that was just that just killed my thumbs and I've got strong really strong grip really strong fingers but that actually killed my fingers. 
um, playing it on the D-pad because it's just so manic, you're like this. But I did well to get where I was. I mean, it is a rock hard game. I can tell you that now in the, in the arcade, it's a rock hard game. That's Gradius 2, that's completely different. So let me just show you what I've got, right? So don't forget that the Japanese call this Gradius in America and UK that we got Nemesis. It's exactly the same game. There's no difference whatsoever. I thought there was some difference because this, this guy who looped the game when I was watching him up in Nurg on One Life, he was just absolutely awesome, got me right into it. He was saying there was a difference, but, but there isn't. I've looked into it. I've talked to loads of experts on it and they all say there's no difference at all. It's just a name change. But there is differences between uh, the different versions on the NESs. On the NES, the Famicom version. So basically, you've got the Gradius. That's the first one, okay? That's the arcade one. That's the one I'm getting for the Versus for the Red Tent that's coming this week. That's not the one I've just played, though. The one I've just played is Gradius 2. Now, this is a really rare game. If you can get hold of this, I totally recommend it. Can't recommend it. That's the game I've just showed you. Really, really cool, okay? So you've got Gradius, Gradius 2. And then you had Gradius 3 for the Super Nintendo. Okay, look at the box art on that. Huh? You can't beat it, can you? Just absolutely awesome. So I haven't played this yet. And I haven't really played that one yet. So, so we're going to give all these a try. And then after that, you've got Salamander. And I'm not quite sure what order. But I think this would have came in before Gradius 3. Um... But you have to correct me on that. Leave a comment. I'm not sure of the, the history of the timeline of these games. But um, Salamander is another ho cool game. Because it was one of the first games that had its swap between horizontal and vertical. So once you did the first level, it then went into like a vertical up going up the screen. Which was really different for its time. And of course the artwork on that, again... Uh, Electrocoin did a really nice salamander cabinet, um, which I really liked. So yeah, we'll check that out as well. So that's it guys, uh, you know, the next video is going to be me playing Gradius in the Red Tent. Can't wait for that, hopefully it arrives this week and I can do it next weekend and we'll do comparisons within the games because, uh, you know, this is such a cool game. Get playing it guys, it's really, really cool. Anyway, thanks for watching, see you next weekend, have a good week.